If you've played Star Wars Battlefront 2 for a while, then you're probably familiar with all the different units and vehicles that we have in the game. But if you're a newer player who just started within the last couple of months, I bet there are some vehicles that you didn't even know existed in Battlefront 2. Some vehicles in the game are one-off units. The U-Wing on Yavin 4 and the Ski Speeders on Crate are prime examples of these kinds of one-offs. You can only use them on one map, usually only in one phase of the match, and only for one team. They're extremely limited, and for that reason you may not even know that they're in there. In today's video, we're talking about what is, in my opinion, the coolest one out of all of these one-off ships, and the most accessible one at that. The N1 Naboo Starfighter, a fan favorite ship from The Phantom Menace. Before we get into it, be sure to fire on that like button, spin your way into the subscribe button, I hear that's a good trick, and comment below and let me know if you knew the N1 was playable before this video. The Naboo Starfighter is one of the most iconic ships in all of Star Wars. It's definitely up there with the X-Wing and TIE Fighter as one of the most recognizable and beloved ships in the fandom, and it's not exactly hard to see why. The sleek design and yellow and silver paint job just screams elegance and speed, and coming from the planet Naboo sets it apart from the other ships that are assigned to the main factions, like the Rebels and Empire. It's a very memorable ship, not to mention the fact that some of the best Anakin Skywalker quotes in the entire prequel trilogy are spoken from the inside of a cockpit of an N1. In Battlefront 2, the N1 is only playable in two modes throughout the entire game. Galactic Assault on the Naboo Thede map, and also Hero Starfighters, and only when you're playing as the light side too. On the Galactic Assault map, it's locked only to the first phase, meaning you have a limited amount of time to play as these starfighters while your team is trying to take down the MTT. They cost 400 battle points apiece, and there can only ever be two spawned in at once. Once you reach the second phase, inside the palace, the N1 becomes unavailable for the rest of the match. In Hero Starfighters, the N1 becomes a playable option once your hero ship is defeated and you can spawn back in with a standard fighter. Again, it's only playable on the light side, and it's found as the option furthest to the right as a fighter class ship. A good but risky way to play as the N1 immediately in Hero Starfighters would be to crash into the nearest object as a hero ship right when the round starts, and then spawn back in as the N1 as fast as you can. It's a guaranteed way to play as the ship, but it also puts your team at a huge disadvantage, so be cautious with it. If all four of you guys try to do this, you will instantly lose the round. Galactic Assault and Hero Starfighters are some of the lesser played modes in Battlefront 2, since most players tend to gravitate towards supremacy and heroes versus villains. This is why some of the more casual or newer players may not even be aware that this ship exists in the game, and with squadrons coming out in just a few more months, any and all Starfighter content is hype. Let's now take a look at this thing and go over its stats, because apart from being one of the coolest looking vehicles in the game, it's also one of the best, in my opinion. The N1 comes with a base health of 900, plus an extra 300 in the shields, and with the reinforced hull star card this can be maxed out at 1440 total, making it right on par with the X-Wings in terms of health. It also shares abilities with the X-Wing, an astromech repair for a quick health regen, an overcharge ability which maxes out the laser's damage output, and proton torpedoes, which can either lock onto targets or be dumb fired by double tapping the ability button. It's more or less the same as the X-Wing, with the biggest difference being in the way the lasers are fired, and this is why I think the N1 is the better ship. X-Wings fire from their quad cannons in a sequence that all converge on one spot to hit the target. The N1, though, fires from a cannon mounted at the very front of the ship, which makes it easier to see where your shots are going, and lets you fire with more visual consistency. In short, it's a more accurate cannon than the X-Wings, and since they both have the same firepower, the N1 gets the edge here. The overcharge ability capitalizes on this and can absolutely melt enemy hero ships or objectives, and with that added accuracy, the damage comes very fast, even without star card support. The proton torpedoes are there for good measure, and can keep the pressure on a target that's trying to escape the lock-on. All of this makes for a very versatile ship that can fill many different roles, and possibly the most tactically advantageous part of the ship is the first-person view, surprisingly enough. Battlefront 2 is different from the upcoming squadrons in that you can freely switch from first and third person views, whereas in squadrons you will be locked to first person. The inside of a cockpit doesn't always have the best visibility in first person view, as the display can block you from seeing certain things, or just takes up too much of the viewing space. The N1 though has one of the most open and visually friendly cockpits out of any of the ships in Battlefront 2. 
only the bottom half is taken up by the display, which leaves all of the top half open for you to take full advantage of. This is another factor that it has over the X-Wing, which feels more cramped and isn't as easy to see out of in first-person view. You can fly more effectively in either view with the N1, and that is already a huge advantage during combat. To play well, you'll most likely be flying in third person anyway, but we're going to have to get used to being locked in first person for squadrons, so this ship is actually a good way to get a feel for what that will actually be like. Of course, the combat in squadrons is going to be far more polished than what we see in Battlefront 2, plus the improved flight mechanics in general will be several steps up, where we won't be blowing up just because the very tip of our wing brushed up against an asteroid or something. We all know how annoying that is in Battlefront, and is definitely one reason the flying modes are not as popular. But if there's any vehicle that should get you excited to fly, it's definitely the Naboo Starfighter. If you like this ship, it can be rough trying to matchmake into Galactic Assault on Theed, or waiting for a lobby of hero starfighters to fill up, and then hoping you get put on the correct side. Also, you can play as a specific vehicle for about 10 minutes or so. It would be nice if the ship was available in modes like Starfighter Assault or Supremacy, so that players can have more of an opportunity to try this thing out, but at the same time, the limited nature of the ship gives it a kind of special status among the fighter class. Before, it wasn't even available in Hero Starfighters, and was only playable in Galactic Assault, so the devs actually made it a bit easier to get our hands on this thing a couple of patches back. If you didn't know the N1 was in Battlefront 2, or if you knew and just haven't had much chance to play as one, I highly recommend you find a match of Hero Starfighters and give it a spin. Finding a GA match can be tough, and it's even tougher to get on a specific map. At least with Hero Starfighters, it's available on all maps, as long as you're on the light side. Squadrons is out in just a few more months, and I've been finding more enjoyment in the flying modes in Battlefront 2, with the new game to look forward to. The N1 definitely adds to that enjoyment, and I'm glad that we have such a cool ship as a playable option. What do you think about the N1? Would you be interested in getting to fly it in squadrons alongside other prequel era ships, as maybe DLC once the game gets released? Or would you prefer Squadron stays as original trilogy exclusive content? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up too if you liked it. That's going to do it for this one though guys, I appreciate you stopping by the Star Bazaar and checking out the video. If you're not already, consider subscribing and getting notified for more Star Wars gaming videos like this, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.